Another common misconception about concentration is that it will always require a lot of effort. Now, it is true that initially, uh, when you attempt to develop concentration, your attention wanders, you bring it back. Your attention wanders, you bring it back. This does require a certain amount of effort initially. But it is not the case that it's always going to require that effort. The time comes when um, it's automatic and no longer uh, effortful. Yes, you have to be willing to invest a, a certain amount of effort. And even after it becomes effortless, there may be times when you're facing sensory challenges when you have to effort again. But it's not the case that forever and ever and ever, it's this huge um, Herculean or Sisyphean task uh, that uh, you're undertaking. You train yourself to be able to maintain uh, profound concentration states while uh, doing it in very complex or chaotic environment. And that's the, um, <clears throat> the dimension of growth of concentration that I refer to as the, it broadens, it encompasses more and more of life. So when I went into that 100-day um, training, I had, could uh, sometimes get a little bit of flavor of concentration through uh, formal sitting, counting the breath. And I could, I could get a little bit of concentration when I would do simple tasks. I came out 100 days later, and um, I was not the same person. Uh, I had been fundamentally re-engineered. It was a very small price to pay. You might think 100 days is a, a big price, is like a long time, and that's a big deal. It's a very small price to pay to, for a new life. Uh, essentially, after that, that taste of concentration was always present for me, 24-7. Now, of course, as fun as it is to tell these uh, horror stories or war stories about intense training in Asia, it's also sort of not a good thing to tell people. Why? Why is this not a good thing to tell you? <laughs> Because if that's what you have to go through to get this, I don't think I'm going to sign up in this lifetime. Okay, it's the natural reaction. It's like, what? I'm going to have to like torture myself with cold water for 100 days if I want to have perennial samadhi? Uh, no, not necessary. In Buddhism, they have this concept called upaya, or skillful means. You don't, it, you don't have to rely on brute force methods you can work smart and get the same results. And my attempt to formulate the techniques and the uh, concepts of uh, this path in a very precise way is my attempt to allow ordinary North American, or let's say modern people, to allow you to get the same results that monastics get without the brute force methods. So no, you don't have to go through this kind of thing in order to get comparable results. You can work smart. And yes, you may have to amortize it over a longer period of time.